So finally, let's package our project so we can have something playable in our computer and an executable that we can actually share with our friends. So the first thing you need to know is you need to define the rules of your game and also you need to define which map will be the starting map. Let's go to Edit, Project Settings, and let's go to Maps and Modes. Here you can select your startup map, which right now is the first person. You can change it if you like, but this is the one that it's important. Game default map. This I want to change to my arena. The default game mode right now is the first person game mode. I'm going to want to change it to my shooter game mode. My map is already overriding this default game mode to the shooter one. So again, it's not going to matter, but it's a good idea to select here the game mode that should be correct. That's the only thing that we need to do here. Now we will package it. To do that, well, we, we just need to find a button to package it. And it used to be here. It seems that they changed the UI, but you can find it here in platforms. We can do a quick launch. We can use a project launcher, which is the one that we want. And we can also make like super quick changes here to actually launch the project. I want to use a project launcher. This is the one that you professionally will always be using because you can create different launch profiles. And with that, we can select a lot of things and have different configurations like a debug configuration, a release configuration, a development configuration. And we won't need to change the values every time. We just need to save a launch profile and that's it. So let's create a launch profile. This will be my development build. Because I don't want to launch it, I just want to build my project. Let's open it. And here it's asking you for a project. By default, we're using the, this project, the T, my first project. If you want to use it in other projects, you can put here any project. The platform will be Windows. This will only be available if you are if you have installed the SDKs of Android, iOS, Linux, and if I choose any of them, it's going to ask me, "Hey, the SDK is missing." So no, I have not worked in this. So I'll just use the Windows configuration development. That's my development build. If this one's a shipping type of build, then I would choose shipping. Shipping is for releasing the game because it's going to strip a lot of information and it won't let you do some console commands that is that are helpful for debugging your game and getting the frames that you have. So for now, I'll just put development, content scheme, send streaming, I'll put pack files. The pack files will be the way that we're going to store the files of our, that our executable will use when we run our game. And if we don't put it as back files and just put uh, loose files, then you will find that you will, <laughs> you're sharing all the U assets that you have. And you don't want that because it's, it will be easier to, to steal your project. So pack files is fine. Compress the pack files. This will make it like a little bit slower because it's going to compress your files, but it's better because when you share your project, it will have a smaller size. The chunking, it's its own type of, it should be its own type of tutorial because yeah, it, I won't get into it. I don't want to bore you. You can make your pack, pack files into chunk. It's, it's very useful whenever you are downloading a game, if your game is chunked, because you don't need to download maybe a two gigabyte file, you can download 10 files that are the chunks of those big files. I will leave this as it is, right? 
we want to cook the content, we want to build it, and we want to deploy it. Now, I'm going to explain cooking whenever we are uh, actually doing the build. So for now, this should be true. Incremental cook, yeah, modify and dependencies is the one that is recommended. Maps to cook, we can use the startup maps, we can select maps. Now, when we're selecting maps, if you do select maps, which is the way that you should do it when you are releasing your game, it's important to know that when we select this, when we try to use this, prof this development launch profile with other projects, you will, you will need to change this, right? So for now, I just put startup maps because that way I can reuse this launch profile with any type of project. Otherwise, it will be very dependent on the type of project because different projects will have different names with of the maps, right? So yeah, it, it makes sense. When you release your game, you only want to cook or you only want to send your client or your, your players the maps that they are going to use. So yeah. For shipping, you do want to select your maps. Build the game. Yes, we want to build the game. Architecture, project default is fine. And archive build, no. We want to deploy it. No, we do not want to deploy it. We want to run it. No. And where is the place? I think they changed names because there was like, oh, do you want to save your build somewhere? Okay. It seems that is this one, archive build. Build the game. Yeah, so it's asking me for a directory we can put here. I believe I already have a builds folder. No, I don't have a build folder. My recommendation is that you put your build folder as close to the root of your drive. Otherwise, you can have certain issues because if you are in a folder, inside a folder, inside a folder, the path gets very big and you can run out of characters and that will cause a build issue. Right, so we will archive our build here. And yeah, I, th I think... Yeah, we don't we don't need to deploy and run it. I think that, that that's pretty much it. So let's click here, click on our development build and launch it. Now these are the steps of our packaging of our project. And saying that we're packaging a project means that we are choosing a target platform, in this case Windows, and we're gonna make all the assets work in Windows. The first step is building. We want to make sure that everything in our game works and that there are no errors. So if your packaging fails here, it means that you have a programming error somewhere. And it could be like uh, silly stuff like, oh, you're missing a texture and that texture is being used for something. So there is a null reference and that could make your, your packaging stop. If it's not important, it's going to give you a warning. And it passed. So everything built correctly, every class compiled correctly, and every material also was correct. Now we're in the cooking phase. In this cooking phase, what the packaging process is doing is getting all the assets and stripping the information that they don't need. What do I mean by this? If I try to open anything here, for example, this mesh, remember when we right click on it and search for it in my explorer, this is a .u asset file. It's not a .fbx, it's not a .usd, it's not. This is an, a real asset file. 
And the Unreal Asset comes with a lot of information that lets you change, for example, the collisions that it could have, the properties that it could have. And we don't need that whenever we release our game. We don't want to change anything. We just need the asset and the already set up properties that we changed inside the editor. So this is going to get all the assets, all the static meshes, the landscape. Here it's getting the rock and it's converting it to a format that will be understand uh, by the platform. So for example, if we're talking about audio, maybe in Windows and dot WAB will, will be fine, but for Mac, maybe not. Maybe a dot AIFF would be fine. I believe it, it, it's like that. Or maybe a video, oh, Mac dot MOB, Windows dot MP4, something like that. So it will choose the most appropriate uh, file extension to convert your, your things. So yeah, that's, that's the cooking of the project. And after that, well, if this uh, finishes, this means that there wasn't an error in your assets. If it fails, usually there was a reference that didn't exist or there was a, a file that is causing issues during this uh, during the gameplay or during the the packaging, the cooking process, right? Usually, uh, it's just very common that some references are missing. And finally, we just need to package this, these build files and the cooked assets and put it on your, well, on, on your drive or wherever you have selected it to be put in. And yeah, here, usually in the cooking phase, it's a waiting game. So I'll just pause the video and show you when this finishes, or at least when we pass to the next stage. My cooking hasn't finished yet. I just wanted to mention that the first time that you're cooking your assets, oh boy, it's going to take it's going to take a while, so make sure to stand up, walk around, maybe go outside and take a walk or eat something. You, you will have time, probably it will last 10 minutes, uh, in the worst case, 30. But don't worry, the next time that you launch your project, it will be very fast. <laughs> or it will be faster than the first time. Finally, we're in the, oh, that was fast. We were in the packaging step, which is just putting the Unreal packs where there should be. And it finished. If you set it up to run, then it will run and it will appear in, on your screen. But let's find our project. And in my case, I put it on C, build. Here it is. We can change this name even better. I really encourage you to change the name. So just put it whatever name you would like. My, fir my first project, something like that. And then we have these files. These are just text files. We don't need them. I mean, if your project is working, we don't need them. This one is the executable. This one is the information about the Unreal Engine, the default things that we need in order to run the engine. And this is all the information that I have added through my content. There are binaries for the code that has been compiled and built. And there is content where all my assets should be, which right now are inside packs. In my case, I'm only using a pack, so you can see that this pack is like 1.67 gigabytes. So that's the <laughs> most uh, this consuming 
asset inside my my game. You can't just get this executable, copy and paste it to somewhere else and expect it to work. This executable is going to look for the engine folder and it's going to look for your project folder. So let's test it, let's open it. You may find uh, that Windows is going to ask you, hey, is this okay? Is this game like your game? There it is. And you're going to see that the assets are being loaded as we speak. There are ways that we can preload this. And if you want to do that, search for PSO precaching or PSO bundles. So now we have our project. Because this is a development build, we can press the apostrophe key and type stat unit to see the frames. Right now I'm running at 40 frames, but it makes sense because I have Unreal opened and also I'm recording. But at least my shadow shows Lieutenant Bellica, and also killing the enemies works, right? So we can shoot them in our game and move around. And I didn't actually test all the collisions, so maybe there is a collision that doesn't exist, but but yeah, you, this I can share. And to get out of the game, we can just use Alt 4, F4. If you want to share this, you just need to right click on your folder and compress it, zip file, and just let it do its thing. And then you can just share the zip file and be done with it. Now, a little issue that you may find when you share your game with someone that is not a developer or a gamer is that they don't have some prerequisites installed, right? And to make it so they install them, we can modify our launch profile. And this break launcher has changed quite a bit. I thought I was going to find the option here somewhere. I mean, it has been rebumped and some options have been moved, apparently. So what we can do is just Come here. Oh, was it this? No, it was platforms, packaging settings, and make sure that here in the prerequisites, we have this checked. Include prerequisites installer. This will mean that it's gonna have a extra megabytes in your package project. So it's extra disk space, but you really want it because otherwise someone that does not have the prerequisites then won't be able to install it. If you are uploading it to Steam, then you can remove this. And in Steam, you have the ability to upload those or, well, not upload it, but just check uh, which prerequisites that you need and Steam will do its thing for you. So yeah, hopefully this has been very eye-opening for you, and you can actually share your game with other uh, other people, your friends. And if they ask you, hey, how did you do this? You can point them to us. 